Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am W2Best and I make videos about tech, travel and inspiration. Right now I am out traveling and I arrived in Paris because I'm on my way back to Sweden after my six weeks of interrailing all the way through Europe. I've been a little slow at uploading videos the last few weeks, mainly because the last three out of four weekends I've been at different dance camps. The last one I was DJing in Barcelona in a camp called Stomp Your Feet and before that I was in Budapest and before that in Brussels Lindy Exchange. If you've never been to a dance camp you might not know what I'm talking about so here's a little snippet of how it could look like at one of those dance camps. <laughs> There's a lot of live music, a lot of DJ music, competitions, social dancing and generally a lot of hanging out with people I like from all over the world. I started my journey back on Sunday night and went by car to Montpellier and then yesterday by train to Paris. Today I'm going to Amsterdam and then tomorrow to Hamburg, then further on to Copenhagen and then back to Gothenburg where I live. Today I want to talk about something that I found very interesting. Dell has released a new computer that is the little brother or the little sister of the Dell Inspiron 15 7000 and it's called something as easy as Dell Inspiron 14 7000. There are a few models available on Dell's site already now but there is one that actually caught my attention quite a lot. It resembles the Acer Swift 5 quite a bit that I made a video about a few weeks ago. So we're going to have a look at the specification and see why I think this is a pretty interesting machine to take a closer look at. Here is the presentation page of the Dell Inspiron 14 7000. And the video that was just rolling there I don't think actually brings up the interesting points of this computer. So that's why I'm here to tell you why this is an interesting computer. It has the 10th generation Intel Core i5 10210U. It has Windows 10 Home. It has up to NVIDIA GeForce MX250 with 2 GB memory. It has a 14 inch touch display, up to 512 GB SSD and 8 GB of memory. We are gonna go down to see the different models of the computer to see how they compare and which one is the interesting and how much Dell is asking for it. Dell Inspiron 14 7000 starts at $899. However, that version is only with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. So I would definitely not opt for that model or the second model here because 256 gigabytes of storage definitely not enough for my needs. I would go for one of the 512 gigabyte versions and then I'd probably have an external SSD as well to make sure that I can actually store all the videos I want to store somewhere. If we look at these two next models that have 512 gigabytes hard drive, they both actually come with only Intel UHD graphics. So it's not a dedicated graphics card, it's only a shared graphics card with the processor. Still, I don't think that the shared graphics card of this Intel 10th generation processor is very nice. I don't think it's a big upgrade compared to the 8th or 9th generations that I've been using before. The only integrated graphics that can actually deliver something is the UHD 650 that is present in some of the MacBook Pros and in some of the Surface Pros from Microsoft. So if you can find one with a UHD 650, they are pretty decent, but in this case I think it's 620 or similar, so it's not going to be good for anything gaming or video editing related. It's just going to be a very, very basic graphics card. They all have the 14 inch touch display with 300 nits and 100% sRGB. This is probably a glossy display, but it doesn't say, so it's hard to know. One of the things I really liked with my Dell Inspiron 15 7000 
is that it has a matte display that works very well when you're using it outside. So let's click over to the last model in the list, the fifth model here, which I think is the most interesting one. If we go through the spec here, we have the 10th generation processor, we have 8 gigabytes of memory, which is low power DDR3, so it's not the faster DDR4 that are present in some larger laptops. It should also be said that the processor is a 15 watt chip since it's a U processor. It's not the faster 45 watt that is present in the 15 version. It has the 512 gigabyte storage. It comes in at $1149. And down here we have the most interesting part. It comes with NVIDIA GeForce MX250 with 2 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. We have the same touchscreen as in the other models. We have 8 gigabytes of memory, as I said before, and 512 gigabytes SSD. The other part that I found very interesting about this machine is when we scroll down to the ports of the computer. Here we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone jack. We have two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, so regular USB A ports. Then we have one Thunderbolt 3 port that is good for both DisplayPort and power delivery. So this means you're going to be able to dock this into a docking station via Thunderbolt 3. You're going to be able to use it with an eGPU if you want more graphics power. Or you're going to be using any kind of Thunderbolt peripherals that you want to connect to the computer. I think this is a very big plus in such a small 14 inch computer. You also have an HDMI 2.0 out and you have a micro SD card reader. This setup of ports is actually really solid. Having both two USB A ports and that Thunderbolt 3 port and an HDMI out and a micro SD card reader is pretty much exactly what you need and is not that different from my Dell Inspiron 15 7000 that has one more USB A port but except that it is pretty similar in its setup. If we're having a look at the weight, I find it to be quite interesting. You have a starting weight of 1.095 and that is with a non-touch screen which is actually not even available on the site right now so I'm not sure if that is a machine you can actually find. But with the touch screen you have a starting weight of 1.2 kilograms. So that is light but it's far from as light as the Acer Swift 5 that I did a video about a few weeks ago. The computer is 319 millimeters wide, 206 millimeters deep, between 14.9 and 17.9 millimeters high. It is made out of magnesium alloy, which is the same as the 15 inch version. And it also has the optional fingerprint reader integrated to the power key which is really cool, but I don't have that function because it wasn't available when I was ordering my machine. Last but not least, it has the four cell battery of 52 watt hour. And since there are no tests available, what I've seen so far, I don't know how long this battery will last. Uh, it's about half the size of the 97 watt hour battery that is present in my Dell Inspiron 15. All in all, I have to say, I think this is a very interesting computer and I'm glad that there is a smaller alternative to the Dell Inspiron 15 7000 right now. Getting a computer with both the 10th generation processor and MX250 combined with Thunderbolt 3 and a regular HDMI and the micro SD card slot, I find really good to get in a 1.2 kilo package. Let's have a closer look at what Dell are pitching about this computer that are not only the specification lists. First of all, they are pitching the Dell Cinema, which is something around color profiles for content viewing, and I'm not very interested in Dell Cinema as a concept. Maybe it's good, but it's not something that I've used very often. The same goes for Cinema Sound and Cinema Stream. 
I'm not sure if they are actually useful. If there's any one of you who actually use these softwares and think that they are super good, could you please comment below and say how you're using them and why you find them to be very good. I would be really interested in getting that information. As I said before, we got the keyboard with the integrated fingerprint reader. That's interesting to have for sure. Uh, of course, there is no numpad as in the 15 inch version. They then pitch the feature of opening it and then the computer starting straight away, even if it's completely turned off. Some people really like that feature. Some people find it incredibly annoying instead. I'm somewhere in between. Sometimes I like it a lot and sometimes I couldn't care less for it. When taking a closer look at the pictures of the I.O. of the computer, we see one more very interesting thing that I don't think was very clearly specified in the specification list I was watching earlier. This computer actually has a 4G input. So you could put a SIM card there, right there in the SIM card slot, and you could use your LTE connection wherever you are, even when you don't have a Wi-Fi. I think this is a really good feature that has usually not been a part of consumer line laptops. So seeing this in a line of Inspron is very, very nice. I have used this feature in a few different devices. If you can get an extra SIM card on your regular mobile phone plan, putting it in your computer and having it always available is a very, very good thing to use. Another thing that we can spot right here in this image is that there is no special power plug. There is no barrel connector in this laptop, so power has to go through the USB-C port. Since there is only one USB-C port, this means that if you're putting your charger into the laptop, you're not going to have the Thunderbolt 3 port available. So you're going to make sure if you want to use external peripherals like a dock or an eGPU that they can actually power the laptop since there's only one Thunderbolt 3 port available. They pitched the LTE network connectivity a bit here and also the weight of the machine. They pitched the look and how the display is specified at 100% sRGB and 300 nits of brightness. Then they pitched the Dell Mobile Connect, which is another one of those apps that I never actually used. And if there's any one of you who use Dell Mobile Connect and think that it works great, please comment below because I would love to hear what is so good about it. There is a port specification right here. And in this case, it doesn't seem to come with the 4G slot. So probably this SIM card slot is an optional thing then, since on some pictures it's available and in some pictures it's not available. Regardless, I think this is a very good port setup. Last but not least, they're just the dimensions and weight. As we said before, 1.095 with non-touch and 1.21 with the touch display. And that's it for my walkthrough of the Dell Inspiron 14 7000. What do you think? Is this a machine that you would be willing to buy? I am not sure because of all the quality control issues that I've been having with the Dell Inspiron 15 lineup. I'm not sure about the Inspiron lineup in general, but just looking at the specifications, I think this is a very interesting computer and one that would compete with the new MSI Prestige or Acer Swift 5 that I made a video about before. This is really placed in a nice spot in the market where about 1.2 kilo but still decent 15 watt chip and decent uh, MX250 is present in the computer. Let me know what you think and if you want more of my content please subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Have a really nice day. Bye bye.